man who takes refuge in him. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for those who fear him have no lack. The young lions suffer want and hunger, but those who seek the Lord lack no good thing. Come, O oh children, listen to me. I will teach you the fear of the Lord. What man is there who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue from evil and your lips from speaking deceit. Turn away from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. The eyes of the Lord are toward the righteous and his ear toward their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil to cut off the memory of them from the earth. When the righteous cry for help, the Lord hears and delivers them out of all their, trou all their troubles. The Lord is near to the brokenhearted and saves the crushed in spirit. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. He keeps all his bones, not one of them is broken. Affliction will slay the wicked and those who hate the righteous will be condemned. The Lord redeems the life of his servants. None of those who take refuge in him will be condemned. Um, so this morning, I just uh, we're going to sing a song that um, you probably don't know. It's, it's called Psalm 34, so it's based on that chapter in the Bible, um, and it's called O Taste and See. Um, and it's just really about that God has laid this banquet for us throughout our lives um, of the good things that he's surrounded for us, and he wants you to, to taste and see all that he has for you, all those good things. Um, even in times of great difficulty, how he's provided for you. Um, and we're just going to enter into worship today with a heart of thanksgiving towards God. Um, so if I can get you all to stand, I'm just going to pray. Um, and if you, don't know the, if you don't know the song, I just encourage you just to pray and to listen to the words. Um, Father God, we're just so grateful to come before you this morning. We're so grateful to call you our God. We're so grateful that you're in this place. We're so grateful that every day of our lives, God, you long to not only walk with us, but direct our every step. And God, we just, um, we offer this um, this morning into your hands, Lord. We offer this time to you and, and we give you of our best. And God, we just ask that you would um, come and meet us where we are God be glorified in this place and know that you are loved and precious and um, in the in the eyes of your church
Lord, I just pray over your people. I am. God, I pray that you would just bring to mind how good you are to us. I pray that as we think back on, on the weeks and months behind us, God, you would remind us of how faithful you are. God, I pray that we would lift our eyes from our own circumstances and just look to you. Father, would you place on each of our hearts what you want us to pray for, Lord? Whether it's uh, wars happening in other countries, God, or just the pain that we see people suffering every day, God, that we would just look to you and ask you to intervene, that us as a church, Father, would become a church that prays for the nations around us. Um, Lord, let us not be caught up in ourselves, but just praise you and bring glory to you and um, that all the things of the earth, Father, grow dim as we just turn our eyes to you.
Um, Trish, you can please take a seat. Um, and I want to just share with you that um, God's table is open to everybody. I think there are some of us here who, who know that we're welcome at his table. Um, that we're used to coming to God. And when I say coming to the table, I mean coming before God, coming to him, receiving from him, being satisfied, being fed by him, being sustained by him. And then, but I think there are also some of us here who aren't quite sure what that means or that don't quite feel like they're welcome or don't quite feel like they have come into God's, they've come to his table before. They don't quite feel like they belong or that they're, might, maybe you feel that you're slightly on the outside. But I just want to share that I'm reminded of, um, the, of a story that Jesus tells. And he talks about how this king is preparing this banquet, this feast. And, and he, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really beautiful story. But the, the message in it is that the, the invitation goes out to everybody. It goes out to all the people. It doesn't go out to a select few people. But the king desires to have his table full. He's prepared this banquet. And... I just, wh- whichever camp you sit in, if you feel, if you know that you are welcome to his table, or, uh, or even if you don't, if you still feel like I'm a little bit on the outside, it's to know that the invitation is to everybody to come to the t- his table, to come and receive from him life. So when I, and when I say come to the table, I mean, I think some of us as well aren't sure, we, we, we know that there's a decision to be made at some point about whether or not I'm actually going to give my life to God, whether or not I'm actually going to accept who Jesus Christ is, that invitation to come to his table is the invitation to say, yes, I will. I'm not going to lead you in a, in a prayer for that. because That's a decision you can make for yourselves. But I'm just going to read a bit of scripture because I'm just struck by the songs that we've sung today are all about worshiping God for who he is, uh, coming to his table, tasting and seeing how good he is, um, giving him praise I just want to read some scripture that's going to, that just describes who this person is. It's from the book of Revelation. It's the last book in the Bible. Um, I'm going to read it out. And what, I, what I'd encourage you to do is I encourage you to sit where you are and open your eyes. Um, and not just look, not look at me per se, but think about the words that you're hearing. But you can raise your head, you can open your eyes, or you can, you can keep your head, you can bow your head in meditation if that's your thing. Or that's okay. But I just want to, there's not, a pot, there's not a way you have to, listen, but um, what, I, what I'd encourage you to do is listen to the words that you're hearing and picture them, because they're just powerful. It's in Revelation chapter 4. I'm going to read the whole chapter. It's not that long. This is John, one of Jesus' disciples, talking, and he says, After this I looked, and there before me was a door standing open in heaven, and the voice I first heard speaking to me like a trumpet said, Come up here, and I will show you what must take place after this. At once I was in the Spirit, And there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. And the one who sat there had the appearance of jasper and carmelian, a rainbow resembling an emerald encircled the throne. Surrounding the throne were 24 other thrones, and seated on them were 24 elders. They were dressed in white and had crowns of gold on their heads. From the throne came flashes of lightning, rumblings and peals of thunder, Before the throne, seven lamps were blazing. These are the seven spirits of God. Also before the throne, there was what looked like a sea of glass, clear as crystal. In the center around the throne were four living creatures, and they were covered with eyes in front and in back. The first living creature was like a lion, the second like an ox, the third had the face of a man, and the fourth was like a flying eagle. Each of these four living creatures had six wings and was covered with eyes and around. Uh, all around, even under his wings, day and night, they never stopped saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty, who was and is and is to come. Whenever the living creatures give glory, honor, and thanks to him who sits on the throne and who lives forever and ever, the 24 elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and worship him who lives forever and ever. They lay their crowns before the throne And they say, you are worthy, our Lord and God, to receive glory 
and honor and power for you created all things and by your will they were created and have their being. Uh, Father God, we we thank you uh, for letting us see, for giving us this description of who you are. Um, Father, I just pray for um, for all of us here that one day all of us will taste and see how good you are. That for those of us who haven't yet known you and know what it means to taste how good you are, that, Father God, you will allow us to come to your table, that, Lord, you'll invite us, you'll call us to, to do that. And for those of us who, Father God, who come to your table regularly, but who treat it for granted, for those of you in the congregation who know that you have treated God lightly or commonly, I just want to lead us in a prayer of confession before him. Father God, we are so sorry that we do we, this week, uh, today, uh, in the weeks gone by, that we have treated you just as common as every other person. I'm sorry, Father God, that we have seen the things that you have, uh, you're doing, and we have ignored it, that we've just taken credit for ourselves. I'm sorry, Father God, for all the times where we have prayed to you and not thanked you or given you credit. I'm sorry, Father God, for all the times that you have been trying to speak to us and we have ignored you. I'm sorry. Father God, I desire so much to just be right before you. Father God, please just forgive me. Let me stand before you. Let me be clothed with your righteousness, Lord. I am just so sorry, Father God, for how I have taken you for granted and not honored you. I pray these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Um, church, we're going to move into a time of offering. And offering, uh, for those of you who aren't too sure, it's a thing you do in response to how good God is. So it's for those of you who have come prepared to respond to God either with, uh, with, with the things that God's blessed you with. So if you haven't come prepared, don't worry about it. You can let the offering bag pass you by. There's no, uh, there's, it's not mandatory if you just come. So it's just an opportunity for the rest of us to, to, um, to respond to God. And I just want to throw out there that if you, if you have sat there and you have just confessed before God that you, and you've asked for his forgiveness and you've really meant it, I just want to encourage you that you can stand for this song that plays during offering as a, as a way of responding to God as well.
Jesus, I love you. I love you. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Jesus, I love you. I love you. Father God, take this offering um, as a token of our acknowledgement that you are the king, the provider of everything that we have. Your word says that you created all things and in you we have our being. So Father God, everything that we have, not just what's in these bags, but our lives, our minds, our, our desires, all these things belong to you. Our ambitions and our plans, they belong to you. Father God, more and more Will you help us to see that you own all these things? That when you take them, when we give them to you, Father God, that truly we're satisfied because it brings you glory. That, Lord, what we really want deep down is to, to know, is to see you getting glory and you getting worship. So, Father, we pray that you take this offering and every offering that every person in this congregation, in your church, is giving to you. And that, Father God, you enjoy it that you bring glory to your name, that you help others come to know you, that they might taste and see that you're good too. Father, we love you. And this is just a token of how we feel. We pray these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Um, good morning, church. Um, we're just gonna, I was going to read through the announcements that we have. We have a few, not too many of them. Um, uh, welcome. So, yeah, there's a lots, of, lots of new faces or faces that you haven't seen in a while here today. So I just encourage you, during tea later on, because we have tea in the hall next door, um, uh, please go and chat and mingle and get to know new people. Um, I, just, I think I did this a couple of months ago, but encourage people to share their stories of what God's been doing in, in your life throughout the week. Um, because people don't know it when they look at you. They don't know what God's been doing. Um, but if you have conversations with people and you ask them about what God's been doing, God, God been showing you, I think you'll be, you'll be surprised and encouraged just to see how God has been working in the lives of the church. So you're welcome. Please have chats in the, uh, in the room next door. Um, next week is Communion Sunday. Um, so uh, I want you to prepare your hearts for that uh, so that when you come next Sunday, it's not just, oh, it's Communion Sunday, this is going to be a different service, but to actually be prepared. And when I say Communion, I would, I would encourage everyone to, to like, Google the scripture where it talks about Communion and read it uh, as your preparation because Communion is about a celebration. I just want to, uh, yeah, I'm getting, yeah. Um, uh, the next one is we have a midweek prayer meeting. Uh, sorry, a, a midweek prayer item. This is the third one that we've had. And this week, so on Wednesday, we're encouraging everyone in church to, uh, to pray. And this week, we are praying for Chinese New Year celebrations. Um, there'll be, for Sunday worship, the, uh, there's going to be outreach, and there's going to be lots of families and groups having dinners to celebrate and to pray over that. That would be great. Um, also, February prayer meeting, and the one for this congregation, I guess, is the English one at 1.30 p.m. Um, yep, so that, that's that one there, so I encourage you to, en encourage you to attend that. Um, I don't know what that says, and I don't know what the next one says. So if you have questions about those, can we just flick back really quickly? So if you're a Chinese speaker, just take note of what it is, and you can ask Pastor Hoy about it. And the next one, same thing. Take note, if you speak Chinese and read it, then you can ask Pastor Hoy, because I can't. Um, and uh, we just want to thank everyone who's serving today as well. Um, I'm going to just read a bit of scripture. Um, I think before this. Uh, Romans. Do you guys have it up there? Nope, that's okay. Let me just get it out. Apologies. Oh, okay, cool. Um, so today's preaching is going to be from Romans chapter 11. So, oh, the depth of the riches of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable his judgments 
and his paths beyond tracing out? Who has known the mind of God? Or who has, seen, who has been his counselor? Who has ever given to God that God should repay him? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Amen. Uh, church, would you join me as we pray? Um, Father God, we want to give you our attention. We want to give you our... Uh, yeah, we just want to give you our attention, Lord, that this morning you would lead us. And we pray that you'd speak to us. We pray for um, Pastor Hoy as he speaks um, and as he preaches, that, Father God, you'll keep him faithful to you. That, Father God, uh, you'll allow us to receive the word that you've given to him and that you're going to speak through him today. Lord, we pray that you would speak to us, that your spirit would be amongst us, and that, Father God, you'd change us. And we pray all these things in your son Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. <laughs> Basically, the last two slides, one is about a Chinese year celebration on the 5th of February at 7 p.m. in Esca. So there will be a Chinese New Year celebration, and the other one is about a Cantonese Adult Sunday School, which is taking part right now, so ignore the second one. <laughs> so before preaching today, we are going to have a special presentation about the church. <laughs> and can we get out those presentations, them slides? Basically, this is the church future plan, as in how are we doing as a church and what direction we are taking and how do we put that into a practical plan. So basically, as you all know, the CGC has been established for about 25 years now, so we're in Dublin for 25 years. That is quite some time ago. And we thank God for all the spiritual gifts of the brothers and sisters that the whole church grew as one in the past years. So now we have uh, four locations, one in Esca, one is Abbey Street in the city center, one in Drada, and one in Limerick. So we have moved from, say, roughly September 2016, we have one full-time staff, to now we have four full-time pastors in the church. That is quite some change in the space of nine months. We have increased from one full-time pastor to four full-time pastors. And obviously, we have one by vocational pastor as well, Pastor Edmund. So this is what has been going on for the past years. Let's uh, go to the next one. And what we have decided, which is the governing body of the church, that is the elders and the pastors, we have decided to stop all the construction work for the meantime. Because for us to see Esker here, to see Abbey Street, we put in a lot of money in the two buildings. And... We, obviously, some of the finance, next slide, some of the finance is coming from offerings, some of the finance is coming from a bank loan, some of the finance is coming from loan from brothers and sisters. So we are now, uh, next one, <coughs> next one, a, uh, yep. So that is the three sources of financing all the properties. So now, we are not building anymore. The reason being that what we have now, the four pastors and the four locations, should be sufficient for the church development in the next three years. So we are not building anymore and put further pressure on our financial situations. So we have to get our finance back in a more healthy fashion. For the moment, we own the bank about 250K or 330,000, and we own our members 1.2 million euro. In total, there's 1.5 million. And every month, we are paying a mortgage of 6,000 euro. And the bank interest is so high. Say, roughly speaking, for the 12 months of the mortgage, we are paying roughly four months of the installments a bank interest, long interest. So every three months, we pay 18,000. And every three months, 6,000 of those 18,000 are interest. So we are paying a very high interest. So what we are planning to do now is we want to clear the bank loan as soon as possible, which is roughly 250,000 euros. So what we are asking the church to do is to donate or to borrow money to the church. So in the coming three years, we can totally clear the bank loan. So the bank loan will be, as, as I said, in terms of offerings or new members loan. So to save us from paying the high interest to the bank. 
So roughly speaking, the leaders ask ourselves the question, how long does it take CGC to be debt-free? So we did a quick calculation and that depending on the offerings and the rental income and stuff like that. So we can repay the whole 1.5 million roughly between eight to 12 years. So after eight years, if the church is growing, we should be able to repay the whole 1.5 million. But if we are going a bit slower than expected, we will need 12 years to be debt-free. So now we need the phrase one of becoming a debt-free church, which is to clear the bank loan. So uh, for the first week of every month, we will do a special offering for clearing the bank loan so that we can get rid of the bank loan altogether. As, as soon as the bank loan is clear, we will start repaying brothers and sisters who give church the new loan to clear the bank <coughs> uh, mortgage. Then after the 330K, we will start replaying the 1.2 million old members loan. So this is the financial plan of the church. And we pray that uh, God will bless us spiritually and financially as well so that we can grow as a healthy church. Can we pray for the church? <laughs> Is it okay? Father God, thank you for the church. Thank you for the four locations. Thank you for all the brothers and sisters and elders and the pastors who gave their heart to give their life to this church, serving this church and helping to build your kingdom. Lord, I commit our church unto your hands spiritually and financially. And I pray that we can grow healthily in your name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> it's 10, 15 now. We still have some time, so it's okay. <coughs> so today I'm going to share a topic which is familiar to most of the people. It is around Thanksgiving. <laughs> a few days ago, a few weeks ago, one of the circle leaders shared to me in the Cantonese uh, congregation. He said that last week in his cell group, he was trying to ask brothers and sisters to share five items of thanksgiving in their life. So he let them know a week before the cell group, give them seven days to think about it. And on the day of the Bible study, most of the people are finding it genuinely difficult, are genuinely finding it difficult to share five items. <laughs> It is easy to waffle around these things. I give thanks because I'm alive. I give thanks because of this. I give thanks because of that. But these people are genuinely finding it difficult to share five items from the bottom of their heart. <laughs> Not the waffling bit. You can waffle 15 points. But five genuine points you want to thanksgiving. They are finding it very difficult. Why is this happening in Christian's life? You see, Christian knew we all knew that everything comes from God. <laughs> this is theology. This is, this is at the Christian understanding level. But how many Christians are living a life of thanksgiving? God's word and promises has not yet invaded some parts of our lives. These are the miserable Christians. Why are they miserable? I will tell you later. In Romans 11, 33 to 36, we read that Paul's outburst of amazement in praise and thanksgiving. What is outburst of amazement? The young people do that all the time, right? <laughs> outburst of amazement. When you receive a present or birthday present from a friend in which you're not expect to receive from, you have an outburst of amazement. Oh my God, oh my God, you give me that person. All right? You give them a hug and you just react very in excitement. This is outburst of excitement. So Paul reacted in outburst of amazement about God's knowledge, wisdom, and riches. That's in verse 33. And in verse 34 and 35, Paul asked three questions to remind as how far above are the thoughts and the ways of God. So the first question he asks, who has known the mind of the Lord? Verse 34. Who has known the mind of the Lord? In other words, who has the knowledge of God? Question number two, verse 34 as well. Who has been 
his counselor. In other words, who has the wisdom of God? And in 25, who has given to God that God should repay him? In other words, who has the riches like God? So Paul has an outburst of amazement about God's knowledge, God's wisdom, and God's riches. We give thanks because of God's, again, knowledge, wisdom, and riches given to us through His sufferings, salvation, and all things that are given unto us. The concept of God as the source, as the sustainer of all things, reinforce God's ultimacy, that He is far more important than His creation. So God as the source and God as a sustainer reinforce His ultimacy over His creation and must be therefore given the honor and glory He deserved. In verse 36, Paul's conclusion was, for from Him, from God, through Him, and to Him are all things. So for from Him, and through Him, and to Him are all things. All things come from God, and to Him be the glory forever. So that ultimacy of God, that is His knowledge, His wisdom, and His riches, He should be the one, He is the ultimate in all things, and He is therefore deserve of our worship and praise and thanksgiving. Amen? This is the theological side. I'm going to go into the practical side very soon. So we give thanks to God. Maybe half of you don't, doesn't even know what I'm talking about. But Ken will know. Samuel will know. <laughs> All right. Let's take it easy. These are the difficult bits. It will get easier, right? We give thanks because of God's grace, because of who God is. Christians in general, these are the practical bits. Christians in general are finding it easy to give thanks to God's saving grace. We know that God is grace, right? There is saving grace. And there is general grace. Saving grace is Jesus died on the cross for us. And especially in Easter time and Christmas time, when we see how Jesus was born and when we see how Jesus suffered for us, a normal Christian will naturally give thanks to God. This is normal and this is very natural. But apart from God's saving grace, there are also general grace. What is General grace. General grace are things God has given to us like air, like water, like sunshine. Sun, sunshine. Well, it may not be in Dublin, but the next one is rain. We have abundant rain in here. And everything on earth, this is God's general grace. And God used these things to bless people regardless they are Christians or not. So general grace is given to everyone. But we, in general, do not treasure these things because these are seen as the basic elements of a human life. And most people do not give thanks for the basic stuff. Who give thanks for the basic stuff? Because we feel that we deserve the basic stuff. I'll give you an example. It is like a boy who was born into a family of a toy shop owner. A boy was born into the world, and his father and his granddad is the owner of a toy shop. And toys no longer excite them because he sees them every day. Legos and action men and teddy bears and Barbies and board games and stuff like that. These things doesn't excite him every day because he is seeing plenty of them. But for another kid who was born in poverty, if we give him a very simple toy car, a matchbox, whatever you call these hot wheels or whatever, when he receives this very little simple toy car, what will be his reaction? He will treasure a very small toy car. This is what we are seeing every year when we are giving the children their shoe boxes. Remember them shoe boxes? that we organize every year. We put toys, we put stuff, we put pencil, we put like, stationaries in the two box. There is a boy shoe box, there's a girl shoe box. So all these shoe boxes will be sent to the more remote countries of the world. 
And when the kids are opening the shoebox, I saw a video of it. And when they open the box, literally they are jumping up and down. I was trying to ask my son to pack the shoebox last year. I asked him, what do you want to put in the shoebox? His first instinct is picking the stuff he doesn't like. They are still toys, right? They are still toys. They are still good toys, but he doesn't like it. He doesn't play them anymore. So he picked them toys and put it in the shoebox. Then me and Amy asked him, how about pick a toy that you really like and put it in the shoebox so that you can bless people? But it doesn't matter what he put in the shoebox. Whoever received the shoebox will be very happy. But we still have to teach our kids to appreciate for things. This is what we are seeing every year. This is why we are continuing to do this every year. Because when the kid, is, when the kid opens the shoebox, they are literally singing and jumping up and down. I have never seen that happening in any kids, in any of the Chinese families and European families. Go to Spit Toys. You see them rolling on the floor. What is going on? <laughs> we have plenty of, do you roll in Spit Toys? We have plenty of air, water, and sunshine. These things no longer appear in our Thanksgiving list because we saw plenty of them. The wealth differences in societies is getting massively big. <laughs> the wish for one girl is to have her own bed, not own bedroom. She wants her own bed because her entire family is living in a small room in a shared apartment in Hong Kong. The whole family got cramped into one bedroom. So her wish is to have her own bed, not her own bedroom. I'm pretty sure if we gave her a matchbox size room, that is the smallest room in your house. <laughs> if, your, if your family is relatively small, under three people or four people, that match size room will be used as maybe some sort of office or storage room or whatever. If you give this child a match size room, she will be jumping up and down because she will be so happy. She was looking for her own bed, but you give her a small bedroom. She will be shouting in appreciation. And a few weeks ago, I saw a documentary in Hong Kong talking about this girl. A girl was expressing genuine concern. She, a girl was very, very worried, genuine concern, before her family is moving into a new house. Why was she worrying? That she said that if there is no sea view in her bedroom, she said, I'd rather die. What is going on in people's minds? What is happening to people? If we do not treasure, if we do not treasure what God gave you, you will find it difficult to give thanks. Amen? Dear brothers and sisters, which child are you? Are you the first one or are you the second one? <laughs> are you the child of a toy shop owner or are you a child jumping up and down when you receive the shoebox? <laughs> are you the girl that you're wishing you, you're so appreciated because you have your own little bed? <laughs> or are you the second girl? <laughs> and obviously we are not saying we are the first one, but we're not saying we are the second one either. So who are you? Sometimes you're one, sometimes you're two. But who are you more? <laughs> Have you ever experienced disappointment when you receive a birthday gift or Christmas gift that is not what you really wanted? Or have you ever received a gift that is not in a particular brand that you wanted? And when you open the Prezi, you got a bit disappointed because you didn't get an iPhone. You got an LG. <laughs> You didn't get a Samsung S Infinity or S whatever these days. I don't know what number they grow to. S something. <laughs> you got a Nokia. <laughs> 3110. <laughs> anyway, those are in the museum. If you received certain gift, <laughs> right, have you ever felt disappointed? Because the gift is not what you wanted. Have you ever experienced disappointment when things happen not according to your desire, according to your plan? How often 
is that happening to your life? Why is the second child reacted the way she did? <laughs> because her mind got polluted. <laughs> Our mind got polluted. If we do not treasure the basic elements of life, what do you treasure? <laughs> We treasure the stuff we bought with money. We treasure the stuff that is dear to our hearts. And normally these things are not the basic elements of life. <laughs> you will see people complaining because the meal is not so nice. <laughs> you have a meal, but you are complaining. It is not that nice. <laughs> that happened to me sometimes. It happens to my child all the time because I can't cook. If we do not treasure, well, I cook healthy, like steam. <laughs> That's the best food, right? But he complained. If we do not treasure the basic elements of life, all you treasure are the stuff you want. All your eyes is focusing on is those extra and those additional stuff. If you do that, you are doomed to be miserable for the rest of your life, regardless you are a Christian or not. Your destiny will be doomed because you will be miserable for the rest of your life because we do not know how to appreciate things and we do not know how to give thanks. There's a Chinese saying that we are already living in God's blessing, but we do not know. We are not aware of God's blessing to us every day. You are already living in blessings, but you do not know. Dear brothers and sisters, we are already blessed by God. You see, the former principal of Dallas Theology, Theology College said that the longer I live, the more I realize how, impo in, in, how important your attitude is. Your attitude is more important than your experience, your circumstance, and the reality, some of the times we cannot control what is happening to your life. Some of the times you can choose. <laughs> you can choose to eat McDonald's <laughs> or Burger King. Sometimes you can choose, but sometimes we have no choice. Things just happen, and you have to react to it. You have to deal with it. Some of these things are good, some of these things are bad. Some of these things are happy, some of these things are not happy. A lot of the times, or some of the times, you cannot, you cannot control what is happening to you. But every day, you can choose what attitude you should adopt to the circumstance. You can choose how do you react to situations. So how do you see what is happening to you is more important than what is actually happening to you. You can choose the way you see things. This explains why. The same things is happening on different people or different questions, but their reaction can be dramatically different. <laughs> the same thing happened on different people, but people have different reactions. I worked in a restaurant for a long time, <laughs> for about two years, not that long, and I observed customer behaviors towards appreciations. <laughs> How often are customers saying thank you? How often are customers saying they like the food or they don't like the food on these things? They are customers who appreciate, who say thank you for big and small things. Wow, the fried rice is so nice, even though there's only eggs in it. <laughs> wow, the sweet and sour is very sweet. Your curry is very curry. Your duck is very duck. <laughs> Your spice bag is very bag, or very spicy, I mean. <laughs> From the moment I give them their starters on the table until the moment I give them tea and coffee, they kept saying thank you. Oh, you're so nice. Your service is so nice, your food is so nice. <laughs> but there are also customers who complain nearly every time they come. I recognize faces. I know they will complain when they walk in. There's people like that. I mean, we cannot be that bad at a restaurant, right? You come to my restaurant 10 times and you complain 10 times? <laughs> Something wrong with the restaurant? Maybe. Something wrong with you? <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> you come here 10 times and you complain 10 times? Something is wrong with you, my friend. Well, you're not actually my friend. These are the moaning customers. <laughs> you know what happened to these, com these customers? They take away the joy of their every meal. 
I don't know how I came up with that sentence, but I came up with that. They take away the joy of the every meal. They are doomed to be miserable because every single meal will not be a happy meal for them because they made that happen. And guess which customer I like to hang around with? You see, we serve the same food, but not everyone appreciates the food. Last year in 2018, <laughs> me and Pastor Patrick experienced a roller coaster year. <laughs> Every week, we work with people with different life circumstances. We witness people living their lives and reacting to what is coming in and out of their lives. There's are babies being born, and there are people dying in hospitals. <laughs> Three to four people, people dying in the hospital. I was there with them. <laughs> Sometimes I was the first one to pray for the family when the brother or sister just died. <laughs> some graduate from universities, and some failed. They have to repeat their years. There's the people getting married, and there's people wanting a divorce. There are people who are healthy, they look well, they look good, but there are also brothers and sisters who suffer from illness. <laughs> I see people getting the first car, and I see people losing their only mom. Some gave thanks even in the midst of going to their biggest challenge in life. But for some people, they complain and they moan at anything, as if they have lost everything. Why is this happening to people? When Jesus was preaching, he preached directly to people's heart. In Proverbs 4.23, let's read. Above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Guard your heart. Be careful how do you react to things before you say it out on your mouth. What is a wellspring? It is an abundant source of something. God said, if you guard your heart, you will experience an abundant source of life. <laughs> you see, those moaning customers are taking away the joy of their every meal. But our lives is way more than eating a meal in a restaurant. If we complain and moan and get angry all the time, if we do not know how to give things, if we do not realize everything comes from God, for from Him, through Him, and to Him, be the glory. God is the King. God, had, God is the ultimate of these things. If we complain and moan, we are taking away the joy of living. We do not just take away the joy of your dinner. You are taking away the joy of living especially the joy of living as a, Christians, as a Christian. Do not take away the joy of living. What are, the what are the impacts of a thanksgiving brother or sister compared to a complaining and moaning brother and sisters to the well-being of a cell group and to the well-being of the church? What are the impact differences of a thanksgiving parent, thanksgiving child, Thanksgiving husband and wife compared to a complaining and moaning child, parent, husband and wife, to the well-being, to the life of a family. It will make a big difference. It will create a massive difference. Who do you like to hang around with? People who give thanks all the time? People who appreciate all the time? Or people who complain all the time? Brothers and sisters, do you want to be a more thanksgiving person? Or do you want to continue to moan and complain? The Bible said, guard your heart, guard your feelings, guard your will, and guard your intellect. From it comes life. It comes life, or for it comes death. You can choose which side do you want to be on. And these are the signs of a life within the soul. We often guard our property, our possessions, you protect your phone. You protect your car. You protect your handbag. You protect your body. Things in which you have a legitimate interest or things that will bring you advantage in life. 
you have a genuine interest of protecting and guarding them things. But before everything else, keep God of your heart. This is what Proverbs said. Be careful of what is coming out from your heart because it will bring out life or it will bring out death. Dear brothers and sisters, thanksgiving is a choice. It is a personal choice. Every time something happened, there is always opportunities to give thanks. Amen? Everything happened. Anything happened. It is always, there's always opportunities to give thanks, including the stuff that you don't want to happen. Because Roman 11 said, I didn't say that, Roman said that, for from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. When we give thanks to God, God is glorified. When we give thanks to God, God is glorified. <laughs> On the Watch Night Prayer meeting, I share a story about a pastor. This pastor always carries a little notebook in his pocket. He called this little notebook the Science of Grace notebook. As he goes through life every day, he will suddenly stop, as in right there on the spot, he will take his panel and start writing on the notebook. He will suddenly stop and record items of thanksgiving. His target was to record 1,000 items in the little notebook because these represent God's blessings and guidance in his life. When he started to do this, he realized something has changed in his life. He noticed that he has started to convert some of the items in this notebook into an items of prayer. He has started to pray for stuff. He has started to pray for thanksgiving stuff. He has started to pray for items of thanksgiving. And in this Science of Grace book, he recorded that he gave thanks to God because a stranger was smiling to him when he's walking on the street. He gave thanks to God when a dangerous driver almost hit his car, but missed. Instead of cursing that guy, he prayed for that guy. He prayed for the safety of the other guy. He gave thanks, God, thank you because the crash is so near and you have your way. He gave thanks for the parking on the street. He gave thanks to God because someone is praying for him when he is in need. He gave thanks to God for giving him direction when he got lost in ministries. He gave thanks to God because he has strength and hope to live every day. These are all the big and small items on the everyday life. Brothers and sisters, what is his secret of thanksgiving? Romans 11, this pastor knew, for him and through him and to him are all things. To him be the glory forever. Plus he got his heart. He used this little notebook to guard his heart. And after that, the wellspring of life just flows. Brothers and sisters, there's no more blessed than worship him from. There's no more blessed than a man or woman who give thanks all the time. I say that once again. There is no more blessed than a man or woman who give thanks all the time. The fact that we can give thanks <laughs> do not depend on how abundant or material stuff you have in your life. One time a sister in our church shared with me, she always complains about her brother and she got angry with the brother. She didn't know why. She complained and got angry with the brother, with her brother all the time. <laughs> she has been like that for quite some time without knowing it. She knew at the beginning, but she got used to it <laughs> gradually to the point that she didn't even know this is happening to her. <laughs> so she shared with me. One day, just out from nowhere, God asked her, how long do you want to be in anger? How long do you want to be in anger? This sister in this church heard the voice of God and she suddenly woke up from this bondage of anger. She repented and her anger was gone instantly, just gone. She didn't know how. Her anger was gone. Dear brothers and sisters, I'm sensing God is asking us the same question 
this morning. <laughs> How long do you want to moan about your situation? How long do you want to moan? And how long do you want to complain about someone and something? How long more do you want to complain about someone? And how long do you want to hold on to your anger? How long more do you want to stay in anger? I bet that God is asking us this question. Dear brothers and sisters, there is no one more blessed than the man or woman who give thanks to God all the time. Because for from Him, through Him, and to Him are all things. Let us make a decision today and make Thanksgiving part of our everyday life. And will you make a decision today <coughs> that praise and thanksgiving will ever be on your lips? Let's pray. <coughs> Father God, thank you for your word. Thank you for your word of encouragement. Thank you for your word of challenge. And thank you for your word. And I believe some of the brothers and sisters today, we suddenly just woke up from this bondage of complaint, that bondage of anger, and that bondage of moaning. Lord, help us this morning and for the rest of my life then I will be able to give thanks all the time God I do not want to moan I do not want to complain I do not want to be angry anymore Lord I want that wellspring of life that is within me will overflow like a river Lord I commit myself unto your hands and help me to give thanks to you in Jesus name we pray Amen let us Sing this responding song. If God touched your heart, you can stand up and sing. If you want to sit down and pray, you can sit down and pray. But let's respond to God. Yeah. 
for your saving grace and thank you for your general grace. Thank you for all the basic elements in life as well as those additions in life. Lord, help me to live a joyful life of thanksgiving. And God, I want to try from today. I want to give thanks. And God, help me to do this. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's all stand and receive the blessing from above. May the grace of God and love of Jesus, the fellowship and the power and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with each one of us from today until the day we go home and until the day, until the day we see Jesus. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. <laughs> so the service officially ends now. If you want to stay behind and pray a little bit, you can pray a little bit. If you want to go to fellowship, go to tea and coffee, you can leave the hall quietly and let people pray. And may God bless you. <laughs>